Oh, yeah. We get real. You have to. That's part of the fun. Conversations that you can share forward. Arrow.net. A-R-R-O-E.net. We are unplugged and totally uncut with Susan Tyler Hitchcock. Arrow. Good to talk to you. I have a quick hello from Paul Mullis, who I consider my step-nephew-in-law. You you were the DJ at his wedding at a theater <laughs> there in Charlotte long ago. At the Carolina Theater, yes. He got so excited. He got so excited to know that you were going to be interviewing me. <laughs> oh, my God. What a small world, right? Yes, indeed. <laughs> oh, my God. Well, I hope he and family are doing well then. They are indeed. Absolutely. Well, then, then you, you that being that close to Paul, I mean, he had to have told you that I'm, I'm a serious tree hugger, that I have replenished this forest here in South Charlotte, North Carolina, and every morning I have a beautiful forest that surrounds me. And, and, I, and, and so when you release oh, a book great. like That's this, great. oh, my God, this, this book is so personal to me that you have released because it is all about those storytellers called trees. Yes, indeed. That's great. <laughs> what What did you... I love to hear you say it that way. Well, it's, it, 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 the, it, well, I always tell people, especially when it comes to the radio shows and stuff like that, that this is not me. This came from a seed which was watered by, by the, you know, the, the, the universe. Then it became a tree. The tree gave its life to me so I could write on it so I could have a conversation. Oh, that's really good. I like that. Indeed. <laughs> and they gave us the paper for the pages of my book. <laughs> that, that is so funny that you say that because I was going to bring that up in the conversation about how special the trees were in knowing your project and your calling that they said you could have us in order to make this book. Oh, there you go. I never thought of that, but I love it. <laughs> <laughs> well, the name of the book is Into the Forest. And, and the thing that is so incredible about this is like reading the stories, let's say about the moon trees. I didn't know this story, but you really pull us in. What is it like for you to discover the things that you did? Oh, it was such a pleasure. It was so much fun. You know, I've, I, I realize I've lived on the edge of a forest just about my whole life. Um, growing up in Michigan and now in Virginia, um, I look out my window at a forest and, um, yet I had not really paid that much attention to the trees. And so it gave me an opportunity to learn so much more about trees, to learn about how they uh, have been at the core, at the center of mythologies around the world, um, and how much they, the trees uh, and forests contribute to the health of the planet mm -hmm. and also to the health of us human beings, to our spirits. Well, you, you talk about the trees, you know, be having that, that, that mythology kind of a connection, but it's also connected to science as well, because, I mean, the tree that inspired science, I mean, it, it's something that the average person would probably say, go get the mm -hmm. chainsaw, we got to take it down. But I love an ancient tree yes. that is leafless. There's still a story there. Yes, indeed. There is a story in every tree, probably. And yep. one of the things that I love to do is to think about the trees in my life. The uh, big, large tree that my grandfather hung a sw swing from when I was little. <laughs> also, when I was little, uh, growing up in Michigan, there was a tree that I called the horsey tree. It grew maybe four feet straight up and then horizontally another four or five six feet and then straight up again <laughs> and that probably was a tree that was reshaped by a native american hundreds of years before as a directional um so you know those are my childhood trees and now there's a tree that i think about um that i just love uh up uphill from my own house. When my son was about 10 years old, he took, uh, took off into the, the forest here in Virginia and found a short um, holly tree and put it in a bucket and took it up it, into his room. And he said that was his Christmas tree, his personal Christmas tree. Well, after Christmas, we planted it and now the tree stands much taller yep. than he does. So, <laughs> you know, I have these, they're, they're sort of pet trees. <laughs> and I'm sure a lot of people listening have pet trees as well outside this studio is is a tree that had to come down because it was old but what was so special about this tree is that a couple of the branches uh kind of just bumped into each other and every morning it looked like the cross was in front of me well when the tree came down during a storm uh -huh. we had to go out there and we, we cleaned it up and everything like that but what the most interesting thing about it is now is that you go out there the trunk is still there on the on the ground the stump but there there is a cedar tree growing in the center of where that tree once stood that to me is like this is much bigger than me and i'm going to watch this story grow 
And there's, it's not just that cedar tree. There's all kinds of activity and life going on as the, the big old tree um, disintegrates. Yep. You know, creatures, insects, worms, um, birds pecking at it, um, and also um, a microbiome forming, um, turning the rotting wood into soil in order to replenish that new, new growth. Um, it happens in the forest all around the world. Susan, I've always been laughed at when I tell people I think the most beautiful part of a tree is its rooting system. They go, no, it's the stuff that's above the earth. I'm going, I'm thinking it's got to be more beautiful below the earth because it's constantly reaching. You know, it is. And, and in fact, one of the interesting pieces of science going on right now is the work on how the underground um, portion of a tree is sending signals to other tree through this mycorrhizae, this fungal network that weaves in among all the tree roots. Um, Suzanne Samard, a really interesting uh, forest ecologist who happens to have uh, contributed the forward to my book, um, has discovered um, actually chemical um, exchanges going on under the, the, the trees between trees of the, the same species, but even from an old tree to trees of the other species as well. They're, she calls these the mother trees, and they're really caring for one another. It's, a, it's an image of cooperation and caring for uh, within the forest, um, different from the, the image of competition among the uh, individuals of the forest that we've often thought about. And through that communication, you talk about how trees will communicate to another tree, especially if, if one has been kind of beaten up by, you know, other other forms of nature. And when they see the animals come into that area, for instance, I give if the deer, they, they, they like eating the leaves off the trees. The trees are sending signals to other mm-hmm. trees saying, hey, look, watch out. We know one one example for sure um, from the African savanna, the acacia trees, which are eaten by uh, their leaves are eaten by giraffes, and it is known that um, a chemical signal goes out from the tree being eaten um, in the air to other trees nearby, and in response, the other trees um, their their leaves turn bitter, so the giraffes won't eat them. It's pretty amazing. There's another example of um, uh, in the rainforest um, of ants called Azteca ants that live only on the cecropia trees. And the, the, the females um, burrow into the stems and, and then plug up the hole that they created, that they chewed in the stem of the tree, and they lay their eggs and then the larvae um, develop. Meanwhile, the other ants are going up and down that tree and keeping other insects and even birds and even animal mammals away from eating the trees, uh, supporting the tree. Uh, so there's this um, a mutual interdependence between the ants and the tree that, that uh, is their um, home. Yeah. I, I study Native American spirituality, and one of the things that we consistently believe in is that the, the tree is a storyteller, that if you're having a bad day, if you're even if you're having a mm. great day, go sit next to a tree and share the vibration, and that tree will embrace you. Trees love humans. And you know, yeah, it's definitely true, and experiment after experiment, data analysis after data analysis shows that that is the case. Um, there's really interesting um, studies done of, uh, of teenagers, for example, who are, are told to leave their phones behind <laughs> and go uh, spend a day or three days in the woods. And when they come back, their concentration, their creativity, and their sense of well-being is totally improved. Um, it's really been found to be the case. And, the, and it gets to the point of the chemistry of being in the forest, the volatiles, the, the, the kind of aromatic essence that is given off by trees. Mm-hmm. Um, some of the chemicals there have been found to be really close to the chemicals in antidepressants. So it's, tr- it's really true. It's, it's uh, not just a figment of our, of our imagination. It's, it's an experience of our bodies themselves that we, are, we feel better by being in the forest. You're going to think I'm totally insane here, but because your book is really released from National Geographic, I'd love to team up somehow, some way. But I would love to go study the trees in Ukraine 
brain right now because I want to know what those trees are feeling, what what the story is going to be. There's got to be something inside those trees that are going to mark this this horrible time in history. I'm sure that's true. I'm sure that's true. You know, um, the rings of trees, tree rings, I mean, that tree that you're talking about that got cut down near your studio, I'm sure you went and took a look at the, the stump. Of course I did. And counted the rings, <laughs> which, yes, <laughs> which gives us a sense of how old that tree was. <clears throat> Yeah, Those it, rings are not exactly the same, and they tell a story right there. Um, you know, uh, difficult times mean it's tighter, um, tighter rings, and abund- times of abundance and plenty of rain and good weather would be uh, bigger rings. And I'll bet you, even if um, a tree is not showing it in its outer uh, leaves and branches, the rings are going to tell the, that story. It's it, Yeah, I'm sure that's true. Yeah, because it was 102 rings. I know that for a fact. And so what I did is I wrote about, so that means 102 years or 102 seasons. That, that in itself opens up my that's imagination. Right. And I'm going, okay, what was here before my house was built here? And I start thinking about the lay of the land and what, what were people doing and thinking? The trees, are they, 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 they share so much with us. Well, and I think that's part of why trees, there is the tree at the center of every mythology around the world, because just like you're talking about in your personal experience, the tree that you're thinking about was there when you were born, and it's going to be there when you die. Trees way outlive human beings. And so we have come to look upon them as wise beings um, over centuries, millennia, really. Does it bother you when there's always the misunderstood tree? Because, I mean, I'll, I'll let any tree grow inside this forest, but a lot of people, go. You know, they've got to go clear their land because this tree is not, we don't like the way this tree is. Because when we replenish this forest, I was working with the North Carolina uh, Wildlife, and we, and we had the Boy Scouts here and everything like that. I wanted all North Carolina trees. I didn't want to go to ho- a Home Depot or Lowe's to plant man-made, basically, m- trees. Yes, that that is worth paying attention to. Also, monoculture tree planting, that is the same tree uh, in rows, in huge um, swaths of land. Mm-hmm. That's not the same as a native forest at all, not the same as a native forest. You know, I've traveled in New Zealand, and there are places where the whole hillside is like a perfectly straight lines of the same kind of tree and it's good to have trees there there's no doubt about it but it's so much better to have the native forest so when people say you know i'm going to plant a tree for nature my response is that's great but all the more important is to save the old forest. Yes. Whether it's supporting an organization like the Old Growth uh, Forest Network or um, the Rainforest Collective, supporting, making sure that we preserve the old forest is, is, is as important, maybe more important than planting new trees. Inside your book, Into the Forest, you talk about forest bathing. Listeners probably have no clue what forest bathing is. Mm-hmm. You think so? I've seen it a lot in the news recently. Forest bathing was um, was uh, an idea that started in Japan um, by a, 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 a um, minister of agriculture, forestry, and something or other. I can't remember the exact title. But as he watched his country become more and more urbanized, and right now in Japan, more than 90% of people live in cities, yep. he realized that um, his country, country people needed to... Um, be sure that they got the experience of, that the forest and the trees and that nature was going to provide. And so he suggested that there be places preserved, forests, where people could walk and experience being that close to nature. So forest bathing is an experience that you can have by yourself yeah. if you want. I mean, take a walk in the park. Even take a walk down a city street, but pay attention to the trees um, that are there. Um, But now also forest bathing is a very official experience. Um, There are 62 official forest bathing 
parks in Japan. Um, there, worldwide, there are forest bathing guides and teacher training programs. It's become quite a big business. Um, wow. But it, it all has to do with going back into nature, going, setting aside a time when you can just spend your time without anything on your mind except being in the forest. Oh, you're so true about that. So true. Susan, you got to come back to this show anytime in the future. The door is always going to be open for you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, you keep keep loving those trees, okay? Keep hugging those. That. You too. You too. You bet. Be brilliant <laughs> Good to today. Talk. Be brilliant. Mm-hmm.